You guys, oh, hold on. What does this look like to you? Look at it. What does that look like to you? It's a running dog. Somebody thought it was a cow. It's not a cow. It's a running dog. It's from a board book at work. I did it really quick. But I, <coughs> I feel like I just did not get his... Yeah, but, well, I can't, I'm not good portions, right? So his face is a lot wonkers. But anyway, I am gonna watercolor him or color cram, maybe. Anyway, gotta keep doing my drawings, you guys. You guys, I'm gonna be social two times in a row. What is that about? I'm trying to see people, right? I'm trying to be a little bit more social. It's spring and I'm not wild. Y'all really one time a week is probably not, but mm. um, one of my coworker friends, we worked together a long time. She retired in the midst of everything. It was just crazy. So we're actually a couple of us that worked with her a long time. I love her. We are taking her to dinner at my favorite restaurant, y'all. Is that a coincidence? I don't know. It's Uncle Julio's. Love it. So I've been debating. Food's expensive. All right, so I'm not getting a drink. I will sip out of my wifey friend who's coming, my girl Rob. I'll drink out of hers. I'll have some of hers. I don't need much. And I'm careful now with, you know, the brain medicine and all that. Um, so I'm going to do that. We love that guac, y'all. Going to get some guac and chips. Just going to do it. It's so good. And then, I don't know, I'm pre-thinking, right? As someone who's got food issues and impulse control and all that i try to pre-think so i definitely love their beef so i might look and see if i love their fajitas y'all that's my favorite love the beef fajitas i know if ever gone there and not gotten beef fajitas right i'm not sure but i'm thinking okay it's expensive and i'm doing like car haul tomorrow y'all mark sue and i are going to gas stations I'm going to talk them into going to Target and we're going to try Target food, but there's a couple things I just want to grab real quick. And if I'm with them, there'll be no shenanigans. So I'm going to do that. And they're a food court. They used to have really good hot dogs and they used to have really good monster cookies. So we'll see. I, haven't, I don't really go to Target anymore because, you know, I hate, I, you know, honestly, I'm trying to embrace change, but don't change a Target when it was working. And now I hate the way they changed it. I do. Just do. And so I'm not watching hauls. Oh, look what I got the Target dollar spot. Rush out and buy shit you do not need. So I'm not watching that. that. Um, I just don't go. Right? Why do I need to go in there for? So, but I think what we can do is try something from the food court or whatever they call it. And then look around and maybe find an interesting snack or drink or something. But then we're heading to the Wawa. We're heading to the Dash Inn and we're heading to the Royal Farms. And then I think we'll regroup back here because I have some stuff that I want to already save. Like y'all, I want them, I don't know if we'll have room or what, but I had gotten these. They're new, y'all. I'm gonna try the new, right? I took a bite, okay? I not like eat the whole thing. Kaz bars, triple chocolate made with real cocoa, right? No artificial flavors or colors or high fruit corn syrup. What is in here that they're not putting on there that they don't have? Let's look. Well, they have palm corn oil, you know. I don't can you, yeah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's see. So, there's potassium sorbate, sodium benzoate. I can't remember which one. One of those I think is okay. Oh, no. Here we go. Here's the one. If you learn one, monocalcium phosphate. That is the one that's super hazardous. Monocalcium phosphate. I'm pretty sure. Yucca has spoken. Zero. Come on, hostess. It's a zero out of 100. They won't sell these in Europe. So, of course, I called it sodium. I didn't want to tell you if I wasn't right. Mono. Okay. So, mono calcium phosphate hazard, maser hazard. I'm going to call you cancer and all kinds of terrible things, right? And there's other things on here that, okay. So, sodium benzoidate or something. Sodium. Oh my 
you guys, well, one thing, there's just too many. Sodium benzoy eights in there. The other one, I couldn't write down, it was so long, because uh, I don't have any. Disodium diphosphate, and then there's one here that I think is bad that I didn't write down because it was long and they shortened it here. Sodium acid priophosphate. So yeah, basically this is chemicals. So we're gonna try it. I'm gonna share it with my coworkers, you know. Wow. You know, there'll be a couple of times. I'm like, I'm gonna try that. We'll be at the Whole Foods getting something new. Let's go, let's try with that gluten-free thing with all those not as, you know. I was thinking about yesterday my uh, my morning talk and <sighs> learning to give myself grace and I don't think my parents had that for themselves so of course I don't think they could show me or you know uh, teach me how to give myself grace and you know thinking about all the food and um, yeah really I, it was like a pacifier for me or Woolworths or you know whatever thrifting books and of course they didn't know better you know, and they're too busy trying to deal with their marriage and who they are as people. So, well, we can identify, right? We can observe in ourselves and identify, yeah, you know, yeah, your parents put your hot buttons and all that, you know, and, and, and some parents can't express love. I was lucky. My parents really could express love and they were fun people. And like I said, my dad was just, amazing and talented and creative and um i think i get a lot of my creativity from him um and my mom was always you, you, you literally that one person watching this would not love my mother i don't care if we were at the grocery store honestly like i told you one day she brought someone home from the bus to me to help with his taxes that's my mother truly so they're good good people but you know people do the best that they can do you know and food is love and um, I don't know, I guess I couldn't begin to fathom, you know, I know my weight bothered my dad and it wasn't even like I had that much of a weight issue really. I mean, by the time I hit some puberty and got taller, it, I definitely, but the problem was there were little, little girl gidgets or little girls, they were small and petite and I was an Amazon farm woman. So I always look big, right? Anyway, but you know, I'm thinking about, okay, so once you kind of, okay, here's, here's kind of the, the origin of the origin story, right? Origin story, but we move on, right? So now I know this doesn't matter. Some people don't know. It just is what it is. Like I said, could be the way teachers treated you, whatever it is, could be, you know, some people are, I, I don't know. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. And this is what my therapist always said to me. When you're into why is this happening? Why did this happen? Why did they do that? Then you're not working. You know, so how do I change it, right? Okay, yes, I can acknowledge that my parents substituted food when they didn't know what to do, okay, or buying things. So I, here I am, an older lady now. I'm, I'm in the, next year I'll be in the third half of my life. <laughs> I'll be, I'm at the very end of two thirds of my life. <clears throat> so, and I'm telling you, it's not fun. This is not easy. I did not have the best, you know, I gotta, I wanna stop quantifying. Last night did not go as high in my head in the morning. I thought it wanted to go. <laughs> I'll say that, right? Um, I didn't eat that much, but I ate later than I wanted to. And I didn't fold my laundry. But good God, all my laundry is upstairs. I'm just working on my tops now and next to sweaters, y'all. So I didn't feel like doing... I didn't feel, I, now, things that need to be hung, I always put on the top of my laundry basket. So I can at least lay them so they're not getting crunched up. Okay. My kitchen's not as neat as I thought it could be, though I did unload my dishwasher. But the thing is, when we're in blaming other people and we live in a society that is looking for fault, can't be me, it's you, right? Can't be me, it's the television show I watch. Just, you know, um, like when someone's, you know, and I see it all the time on customer service, if someone's, if you mirror back to how people treat you when they're in negative space or angry people, you know, we're human, so sometimes you do it. But really, I always think when I'm starting to get ratcheted up and think, you know, um, because I don't do it like other people. I, I mean, you know, I can be a little snarky. But when you get in that headspace, you know, it doesn't feel good. So the, the end of the story is, regardless of why you're doing what you're doing, parents, 
society, your husband, your kid, whatever it is, right? And I have a neurodivergent brain. I do. I'm going to get a certain neurodivergent. Y'all, I love that word. I love this idea of understanding my behaviors. So some of it is brain, right? Some of it's like, you can think all you want, but I'm not going to get taller, right? And I'm not going to, my brain, I can do whatever I can to help my brain, but my brain is still my brain. And in another world, I'm probably a very successful lawyer helping people. And, you know, I can't remember people that said, you should be a lawyer. You should be a lawyer. And, um... I don't know. I didn't understand at the time why I couldn't become a lawyer. I just knew I couldn't. Maybe I could, you know, but it wasn't my path, right? I had a different path because I'm a very good debater or, you know, trying to talk people into things. I remember one time when I worked at the Senate elevator and um, there was this guy. So there's people from all over would come and work. It was like a patronage job, right? And there was this really good looking guy. Like he'd been some star football player in college and but maybe not the brightest crayon in the box but he was in the box y'all probably making millions of dollars right now um but we would have to work late when the senate was there you had to stay and if it was your late night you had to stay well if it was going to go past a certain time y'all I, I didn't have a ride home right so i was trying to talk him into taking my shift and, um, yeah, but because I was so good, I, he could, he did not want to, but I talked him into it and, um, yeah. And I remember him saying to me, you should be a lawyer. <laughs> it's a compliment. I think I don't, maybe not. I forgot about him. I don't know his name. And there's this one guy from Louisiana. He was unbelievable I, he was just bizarre and he was a little older not old, old but you know i was younger then but i don't know he never seemed to brush his teeth i don't know he always had this look like he slept in his car and um so one day he comes in his car like a piece of crap car had been towed and by the time he went to get it they had already crunched it up like doing the earth a favor i'll never forget that anyway there's lots of stories there but um <clears throat> I digress. So yeah, so okay, am I going to feel bad? Like, oh yeah, whatever. I I don't know. I just know that we have to have grace for ourselves. And I, I think more than anything, this whole period is learning grace. But I'll tell you, what I'm trying to concentrate on is the uncomfortable feeling I'm having now. This feeling of I don't fit in my skin anymore, if that makes sense. Compared to what I do, like drinking soda, eating food, or shopping, or not taking care of myself, you know, not um, having a, a calm environment, all that feels worse, right, than this uncomfortable feeling in my skin. Because I know I'm moving forward, right? And what I have to do is give myself the grace to move forward as I can, not as I want to, not as I think I should, but as I literally can. And that's huge for me because I am so hard on myself. Like, why did you not fold your laundry? What the hell? You could take it off your list, but you chose not well, you know, honest to Pete. Right? I'm like, shut up. But that, I have to listen to that part. I do. That's the part I got to engage with. And she annoys the crap out of me. Right? Annoys the crap out of me. So, therefore, she needs my love and support. So, how many Tracys are there, y'all? I'm thinking a lot. I am. Well, right away, there's the how we present ourselves to the outside world, maybe your family, your children, friends, where you work. I mean, we just, there's so many different faces we put on. I tend to be how I am. Like, what you're seeing here is pretty much how I am at work, is how I am with my friends. Um, I, you know, of course, you're in a different social situation. I tend to get quiet until I figure out what's going on. Truth, true that. And then once I figure it out, y'all, I'm just, because I'm curious. I love people. I'm curious about people. I'm curious about everything. And um, I don't know if you're born with that. I think my father did foster that. My mom was a very curious person. Um, I think my brother's curious. He's a photographer. Um, and, you know, he started this Faces of Frederick where he went and take pictures of people. It was really interesting. I should find a link to that and let you guys look at it. It's amazing. So 
yeah, it's okay. Um, I could be stuck blaming my parents, right? It's their fault, right? It's their fault. They weren't the right parents for me. They didn't parent me. They didn't do this. They didn't do that. But I will say this. I have worked through most of my issues with my parents. You can do that, y'all. Maybe the only way with some parents you can do it on the other side. But you can do it right now. And it has nothing to do with how your parents respond. It has nothing to do. You do not have to share this with people. Maybe it's your sister, right? Maybe it's your best friend. Maybe it's your husband. Maybe it's your children. But you do not, they do not have to be included in this. And you can change your relationship. Is that amazing? The quality of our internal life does not depend on other people. And as a matter of fact, when it does depend on other people, you're in trouble. And yes, you want to share that with people and people add joy and support. But if you're counting on something on the outside, and I can remember this, when I first started working, like I was working at bookstores, managing a bookstore, I had 25 people, all kinds of it. People here think they work hard. You have no idea. And I had five different managers. You had your the finance guy. You had the schedule manager. You had the merchant. I mean, honest to God. And one of the worst things was when you didn't make as much, you had to adjust people's hours down. I, oh, I hated that. There's a lot of stress, okay? A lot of stress. But I was young and I had energy from here to there. And um, I also worked at a library 20 hours. And... Um, it was a lot of stress. It was a lot, but I could do it. I was young. I liked the people I work with, but I ended up, I knew this bookstore crown was, I knew I could tell that the people they brought in to fix it, were going to destroy it. Cause they had no, you can't just say, Oh, um, this is like, this is just like it's giant, you know, it's just like, um, circuit city. No, it's different. And these people don't understand books and people and this, all that goes into this. Really, it's different. It is different. It, I know Amazon on this, but it's different. So I, so I thought, you know what? I My mom and I worked for like six more weeks. I said, I'm going to take everything on my paycheck. I got a little bit of debt, pay it off, and then I'm going to go down to 20 hours. So now you know, I'm working 60, so I've made extra money, right? So but at the library at that time, you could substitute, right? So I got close to 40 hours pretty much most of the time. And then I got a full-time job, right? I had all this energy. I mean, I'm just a natural um, manager in that sense. I just see, I can see the whole picture and know exactly what to do. I can see things, it, whatever it is, like my, my regional um, manager for Crown said to me, you know what? She said, People adapt to this. They, you know, she goes, you took it to like a duck to water. Like, I didn't need to do one thing for you, like, other than give you praise and let you know I'm here. Because it did come natural to me for whatever reason. <sighs> Maybe it was all that time playing in my, writing checks off my dad's account and doing groceries and all. I had, I had employees. I was busy, y'all. My stuffed animals had to work. But I, it, it just came natural to me. It still does. I just can see the big picture immediately. Um, maybe it's being empathetic or whatever it is. But so here I am and now I got, I'm at my branch. I have like, you know, I, it, it, you know, you could work extra. So I was just say, I had so much energy. Like I was a whirling dervish. Like I could do everything. And eventually there was a big fallout. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not even going to get into it. Involve someone. It was nuts. And he thought, oh, he thought I had, ooh, he thought I had a crush on him. It was just crazy stuff. I can't even involve Mimi and this other crazy woman. So it was devastating <coughs> to me because I got most of my self-esteem, this feedback from outside from work because I was a hard worker. But you know, the thing is when you shine like a diamond, people sometimes don't like it. And it really devastated me. And, um, I had to regroup, right? And that's how I started therapy, which was really good. It was very complicated and just ridiculous. So, so part of what I started to do was ratchet down my energy, right, and use it elsewhere. Um, and I could have said, "Well, it's his this person's fault," right? But and let me tell you, we all have stories about this person. God bless him. Somebody needs to. But you know, it was painful. It was painful. But slowly, slowly, I started to, um, now this is about medication, but I started to 
hold back a little bit never with customers never 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 but with um you know not doing other people's jobs not realizing i was doing that um but it really started to slow down and um let let things fall like not be there to catch everything keep that ball in the air it's not my ball even though i can see it coming i can keep it in the air i let it drop and it was very hard but i really realized that i cannot get my value from my workplace not that that's not nice but it really started me on this journey and um and now you know you, you have to value yourself, right? And other people will value you that are capable. Not everyone's capable, y'all. Everyone is not capable. So I don't know. It's interesting. Um, but right now, I think for me, so your mom and dad did this. Your sister did that. Whatever. You know, okay. And that sucks. Nobody, sh no, that sucks, right? We all should have a love-warming home environment. I, it just breaks my heart. I can't read about stuff. It just really upsets me. But I don't know why, but some people can't do it. They didn't have it. I don't know. I really don't understand it. Um, but you have to look at, are you treating yourself the way they did? Are you doing to yourself, right? And by, for me, feeding myself when I'm not hungry, buying stuff I don't need, is not helpful, right? It's my parents didn't intend for this. So it's uncomfortable. It's extremely uncomfortable. Cause like if I'm not, if I'm eating healthy, I'm usually spending too much money, you know, whatever. So to pull myself back. And so it's my work to do, but the, I will say this, I'm constant communication with my parents. And I have friends that don't believe that and that's okay. I'm not here to convince anyone of anything. I'm just sharing my story. And I will say this morning, I realized I was going over my head. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. You said, I felt, whoa, okay. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. So let's, let's, let's have a minute here. And I got in the shower and I was just trying to send loving thoughts to myself. And I get out, I'm getting ready to, I put, I don't know. Honest y'all, I don't know how this works. It's getting my bra to put on. And something fell to the floor. I always ask my mom for signs. And this is what fell to the floor. It is the United States Capitol, Washington DC. This is one of my mom's pins. She wore on her lapel, right? It fell to the floor. No idea how it did that. No idea. But I do know that it's from her and it's a sign that I'm on the path of loving and that she and my dad are here to help me. And, um, you know, that's a very powerful thing. And it's, you can, like one of my good friends who I haven't seen in a long time, but we work, you know, you just meet people and you know, you can see each other in five years and you just, it's as if time has not been there. And she's had a really difficult relationship with her mother and had been, you know, um, had like had her mother in her life for three or four years. And, Luckily, she got married and met a great guy and have a great kid. And, you know, not that there aren't struggles, but she really chose a very good support base for herself. But her mom died. And I know that in some ways, I think it might have been harder because, you know, my mom and I worked out a lot. And but when you're estranged, because there's always that hope your mom's going to come around and see you for who you are and love you and call and say, I, you know, I've been wrong. I'm so sorry. You're the most amazing thing that ever happened to me. And I want to try to make it up to you. But so that possibility is gone. And I think you might not even be holding on to that possibility. You don't even understand it. So there's a lot to grieve for, right? There's a lot to grieve for. And, um, you know, and I just, she's been doing so much good work. And I just try to send her love every day. And it's not easy. It's not. But I did tell her, you can heal your relationship with your mother. You can has nothing to do with your mother. It has nothing to do with feedback from other people other than your internal self, right? That's where the feedback comes from. So when you get messages and it's uncomfortable and you like reach for a soda, you reach for a coffee, you reach um, for your phone, you reach like, oh, I want to buy that. Or 
You know, my thing too is I make a list in my head. I don't do it as much because of my medicine working, but whatever it is, start just observing yourself. What do you do, right? Um, and everyone's in different, and there are people who've either worked through this or just really never have this kind of angst, right? They have other things, you know, other traumas that happen and pain. You know, I have someone here who's lost a child. She's wonderful and she always supports me and that's a pain, you know, that people should not experience, right? And um, yeah, Donna's her name and she's lovely. And um, so people are suffering, you know, and then every, some people suffer from depression. I have a new friend from Florida. I don't think you've told me your name yet, but um, you know, so through no reason because of your biology, right? So one of my old coworkers, I was talking to her about something. We exchanged puzzles. So I want to show you my puzzle too. So we put puzzles out and I want, you know, and people love them. And, but we have smaller tables. So I need a 500 under, well, really 300, 400. But anyway, and they have a big puzzle. So they want thousand piece puzzles and people are donating them. And there's ones I've done that, you know, I'm not going to do again. So anyway, so we were doing puzzle exchange and, you know, her kid has really severe anxiety and has um, ADHD. And his therapist said to him, one of your parents has it. And now, you know, I don't know about my dad because he's gone so long ago. Um, but my dad definitely had, you know, so who knows anyway. And she got, she told her psychiatrist and he, like, let's test. And sure enough, she has ADHD. And I said, it's interesting because I would never, like, people could look at me and say, yeah, girl, you're ADHD. But you wouldn't do that with her because there's different levels of it, right? And we cope in different ways. Um but she, I remember one time, so her, and this was really before the pandemic even, and she, um, you know, gets medicine for a kid for anxiety and he has started a new batch and he was under the bed, like having severe anxiety because of this pill. And it has the word doc because it came from a bad manufacturer, India, some kind of doctor or something or other. And we were talking about that. And so now, like, she's on Vyvanse, but she couldn't get for a month because everyone who's on, I mean, it's just shameful on the government. But, so they had to try different anxiety medications, and he finally said to her, I'm not taking it. Because each time I have a new thing, I feel weird in a different way, right? Because there's no consistency, and this is the same brand. Anyway, so, I don't know where I was going off the track here. But, um... But yeah, so it's interesting. But I do think that being observant of yourself without judging is not easy. I'm reading this book called, you know, Nonviolent Communication. And one of the things it says, are you observing or are you evaluating? Well, you know, I think as humans, we evaluate a situation because it's a matter of safety, right? Um, but I think even tonight, like going to dinner and pre-looking at everything, trying to make a decision, I'm not sure that's observing as much as evaluating, right? Like I can't trust myself. And, but the thing is, you know, and add a food disorder, add impulse control and, you know, I'm trying to do things differently. So we'll see in the moment. And um, I feel like it's the weirdest experience. Like I'm missing out on something if I don't get my fajitas. And that's that little girl in me, right? Well, of course you, it doesn't matter how much it costs or, or that you can't eat all that. You're, we we deserve fajitas. What are you talking about, right? Because somehow food is in a reward system. Not, oh, this is food to help heal my body. This is food for energy. And yeah, sometimes this is food for pleasure. But it's a I can catch myself now. It's a reward. And why am I not being rewarded? What did I do that I can't have fajitas? Well, you know, one thing, they're probably $30. And I'm trying to save my money. So I'm trying to be conscious of it. Well, you can, you will break it down three meals, you know, on and on we go. So, but being obser observant as opposed to evaluating, I thought, wow, you're evaluating it and you're judging yourself without even understanding you're doing it. It's like a lickety split. So I was, I thought, wow, that's great that you caught that, right? That you observe that, wow, that's what's happening here. Um, and, you know, I thought it's not a matter of doing everything perfectly or right, you know, we're, we're a journey. We're, you know, it's like, you know, you watch a baby learning to walk, 
right? And some babies don't want flat out. No, I'm not walking. I want to be carried, right? And some other babies are just like up and going and wobbling and fall and don't care. You know how it is when a kid like gets hurt and you act like it's okay. Like, oh, come on, da da. And they're like, you can see the struggle in their face. Like, is this okay? I don't think this is okay. <clears throat> but sometimes you'll distract them and they won't. It's not that they didn't feel the pain. It's how you respond to it, right? Oh, baby. Oh, no, come here. Oh, you poor thing. You know what I mean? Like, it's interesting. Um, it's been interesting. I've really been kind of observing parents and kids and stuff. And it's very interesting. So it's kind of like that. And I was like, okay, well. Okay. We'll do our best. It's okay. You know, um, getting fajita is not the end of the world, right? Not getting them is not the end of the world. And um, it's like you already said you can't have a drink. Why can't we? I mean, honestly, so that voice is there. And she's she is the one I need to love the most and give the most grace to. So when you, if you're not ready to do it, then, yeah, you distract with food, with soda. I just, soda is so harmful to your body. And, and coffee's better if you don't add sugar and milk, but even that, anything done, you know, um, anytime you do anything to an extreme, right? And don't listen to yourself. Like one of my coworkers yesterday said she had too much caffeine and she was jittery and, and she's working on her anxiety. And, um, you know, okay, so go drink water, do what you can, make sure you get food, that kind of thing. You know, your body tells you, right? When it feels good, when it doesn't feel good, when you've made a mistake, you're going to pay for it. But, um, yeah, and it's just, um, yeah, just loving yourself through this. And I know right now people who are in different cult relationships with people in their life, it's hard to say you can heal that relationship without them being involved. It makes no sense, right? But that is absolutely mostly how people do it. Mostly people aren't going to change or acknowledge or that's why I think when they go to the other side, it's different because they don't have that ego and that spirit's different. But anyway, so I don't know. I do think I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying even entertaining the thought like, okay, this is how I feel when I talk to whoever, and this is how I react. This is how I harm myself after I talk to that person or I'm in with that person. And yet I can't change the circumstance of not being with them, right? So what do I do? Do I just suffer? Do I just medicate myself with you know, food and shopping and scrolling? and Or do I try to start to pay attention to myself and listen to myself? And it's painful because it doesn't feel good. It doesn't, but... I do think the way the way out, right? The way to move forward is that process, you know? And I do think once you start it, there will be grace and there will be honestly, you know, that footprints um thing, the footprints in the sand, you know, why are there only one set? Well, that's when I carried you. And I do think that whether you want to call the universe, whatever word you use, God, angels, you will your ancestors, you will be lifted. And um and I can look back on times and think, wow. I think the times you might feel abandoned or isolated or something, I do think that's when you're being lifted. I do. So, you know what? It's a process. We're all, I mean, I've been doing this since um, 1982 on this journey, truly learning, reading. And I just make, you know, and I have friends who like, I, I can't believe that's how you felt. And I'm like, well, I was very good at pretending that's how I didn't feel, right? Um, but I'm sorry, if you guys are overweight as I did, that's a problem, right? It's a problem. So, um, someone asked me, are you going to do any of the weight loss drugs? And you know, what's interesting is I had my surgery, gastric sleeve, saved my life. But right now it, for me, and it is like right now I'm not unhealthy in the sense that my blood pressure is out of control. My cholesterol is out of control, that kind of thing. Um, and I do think it's a biological issue and I think there are people who should take it. Absolutely. And you're going to respond differently to each one. You got to figure out one that you can tolerate the side effects, right? Like I get the worst dry mouth from the, the generic Adderall, but that's okay. I will live with that, right? But again, there's things I can do to help my medicine work better. You know, if you're going to take your medicine and then you're going to do shit, to, sorry, things to undo it, what's the point of that, right? But 
but no, I'm not right now. I, I think everyone should. I mean, honestly, it's biological. Like, and everyone's overweight for different reasons. Everyone does things for different reasons. But at the end of the day, your body is being affected probably the same way. <coughs> so I've been blessed. I never really had out of control blood pressure or cholesterol. I trust me, it's not from eating good food. But my insulin level and my sugar level, you know, that can go higher. So, um, yeah. But no, right now, no. I am working on it. Um, I've done, I think, the medical intervention. And I would in a heartbeat if I felt like something changed or I really needed it. But right now, I just want to, I don't want to introduce anything new to my body. I really want to work on my heart, my soul, being in the moment, grace, and loving myself. But trust me, that would not have worked when I had that surgery. My, my health would be so much worse. So I'm so thankful that it was there and I could afford to do it. But anyway, so I just want to give you some food for thought. But I did want to share with you. Um, so this is a puzzle someone donated. So I am going to do it here. I'm not sure it will fit on our table at work. <clears throat> but how fun is this? Yeah, it's fun. So ultimately, my goal is I have this round thing, which is for puzzles, but I love this thing for my art stuff, and I have a round table downstairs, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I can just put this on the table, right, and then put a, you know, if I need to, put a um, tablecloth on it. I will not be starting this now, um, and I do get obsessed, but look at all the things like I can, I, I can try to do that face and... I mean, just look at all this. Isn't that, I like puzzles like this. If there's like someone, one of the puzzles was it's like a city scene, but it had a yellow over it all. No, no, no. Or fields of grass. No, I don't enjoy that. I, don't, I mean, I don't mind sometimes having to go by shape, but overall, y'all, no. And there's another one that's a thousand piece. So I took those two. I can't wait to see the puzzle she sends us. People really love doing the puzzles and you don't have a table or the time or you're compulsive. We have people come in be there two hours they'll come back the next day they're trying to limit because at home you know what i'm saying they would be there all day and i get it it's it's yeah right when you don't when you have to do other things you're and you really need to do them you're not starting a puzzle are you really no so but anyway and my thing too is anyone who's listened to this it's not i do not want you to think wow um or sometimes when you hear a truth or it feels like a truth you might experience like I, my heart chakra right now hurts and that's a whole nother conversation so I'm trying to breathe into it but it's not the person you know I, I just it's hard I get it it's hard and it and there's nothing wrong with you if you can't change you're okay you're okay if you can't change right now and maybe if you're drinking a lot of soda have a soda and have a glass, a big glass, a bottle of water. Like try to not say I'm not having soda. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that, right? Like I say, if I say to myself, you're not having sugar, all I want is sugar. If I say you're not gonna have any gluten, then that's all I want. And I'm struggling a little bit. I'm trying to change my mind around about not that I'm gluten free, but I'm choosing things that are different. So I want you to know right now you're, it's, there's nothing wrong with you. You're responding in the best way you know how. The best way you know how. And I am 59 now, and trust me, this has been my most of my life. And to go back and say, give myself grace that things that have happened is just really a whole new phenomenon to me. It is painful. But I'm doing it because I'm worth it. But you are fine the way you are. It is not about heaping, yeah, I'm a loser because I'm drinking soda. It's, my, you know, it's not about that. It's about how do you feel internally physically, but also in your heart and soul. How do you feel? And understanding that you do have the power. You do. It may not feel like it, and but you have the power. And maybe right now you can't step into it. And maybe you have things you can do and get done in, in other areas, but you are capable, but it might not be right now. And that's okay. But how are you feeling? How Be aware of how you're treating your body. You're not hurting anybody else, right? Even if people get angry. And my mom was never really one to say, well, you're on a diet. Because she knew how hard I tried, right? So she really wasn't like that. Did she make cakes and candies? That's another story. But um, my dad, it bothered him a lot. Um, which is probably the point. <laughs> 
but it's how do you feel, right? How do you feel? And if you feel, if you have anxiety and you're drinking tons of caffeine, like my, my friend did at work yesterday, we were at lunch and she's like, it doesn't make you feel better. It makes you feel worse. So that's, that's my thinking. So for me right now, it's like, I'm, um, I'm not saying I can't have gluten. I'm just slowly eating up the things that do have gluten and thinking about when I buy something not to do it. There's so many choices y'all. And I think I'm going to live on that chicken salad. I'm going to make some this weekend. That was so good. Oh my God, you guys. So easy. And, um, I'll get all the ingredients. We'll make that together. But yeah, so that's it. You're, you, this is, you do not need to feel bad that you're doing this. Does that make sense? Like you don't need to to judge yourself and ridicule yourself, be mean to yourself. I just want you to f see how it feels in your body, right? It's observation that this doesn't feel good, right? And that there is another choice. I can't make it right now, but I can head towards that choice. Like, you know, you can, sometimes when I get in a dark place, it is so hard to see the light. I have to remember that I will not be stuck here. I won't. I may be here longer than I wish I was. I I may hold it against myself. I'm here, period. And that, y'all, I have worked on. That's crazy thinking. But um, because, you know, in a lot of this, we hear these messages all the time because people want to sell you things. If you're like, hey, can you imagine if all of a sudden overweight people, if it wasn't hurting their health, like were happy and didn't want weight loss products? I mean, it's billion dollar industry. Just like people trying to look like they're 21 when they're, you know, 80. It's, they're telling you you're not okay. I just, you know, I just want to rock my skin and my age and, um, you know, and just have a life instead of worrying about trying to look like something, to attain something I can. I do want to sleep better, y'all. I think that's the key. I'm going to work on it. I am working on it. But that's my, my thought. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. You have a set of circumstances that are hard that other people might not even be as functioning as you are, or as far as you are. And that, you know, you do have accomplishments. So it's not about that. I just want you, if you're doing something that makes you physically feel bad to think about it. And again, it's not like, oh, I mean, if someone said like when I was getting my weight loss surgery and it's like, she, you won't want Coke. And I thought, how, you know, what are you talking about? Like that freaked me out because Coke was my pacifier, my baby bottle, right? It's what I used to get through. Now understanding what it was doing, and because I'm all distracted about how bad I felt with that, I didn't have to deal with all this other stuff, right? So once you sort of walk away from that, and you nothing, you just don't have to, you don't have to wake up tomorrow and think, okay, I'm not having Coke. You have like, you'd be miserable, but just have water. If you have a soda, drink a, you know, a bottle of water. Try to have two bottles of water in between. One, you're helping your body flush out some of that caffeine, um, and I said to you, make sure you've eaten something, make sure if you're going to have a soda that you have protein, do not like I now, when I wake up, I have part of my protein. Well, I definitely try to have eight ounces of water. I finished my water. I brought upstairs. I make my protein shake and try to have, or I save it from, you know, make one and have it and try to drink at least eight, 10 ounces of it. And then I have my coffee. Yes. Yeah, so I want to come down and have my coffee, but I do know that all that helps my body not work so hard with that caffeine and the sugar. So that is just what I'm doing. And I just think adding things instead of worrying about it. And I'm telling you what, the more water you drink, the more you get protein in your body, your brain feels better and it can help make a very a better decision that when your brain, like, you know, my friend and I were talking and it's like, okay, when you went on to your second cup of coffee, your caffeine brain started making decisions. And that's like people who drink. When you have a drink, right? It changes your brain and becomes easier to make bad decisions that might lead somewhere you don't want to be, as opposed to you wouldn't do that had you not had alcohol to change your brain. So these are my thoughts and I, I'm going through it with you guys. Like I am, I, we all are in different paths. We're different journeys. We're different, you know, but we're the same in the sense that, you know, we want peace and we want to feel good and we want close relationships and, you know, we want to have, we want to have value. But I think, like, I do feel I have value to other people. I really do. And sometimes I felt like a phony and like, I'm fooling everyone. Like how are, you know, really? Yes. True. Truth. 
And, you know, now it's like I want to value myself. And I think I do and I am. But you know what? Right now, it feels really bad not fitting into your skin. I'm feeling like I fit into my life, right? It's just it's painful, but I don't want to hide from that pain. And I know the only way through, you know, to get somewhere else is you have to keep moving. And maybe you sit. And then you can get back up again and you can move a little further. So anyway, so I didn't want anyone to misconstrue my talk from yesterday. And I'm processing this all with you guys, right? I'm not trained to do any of this. I've just read, I've experienced, I've observed. And I just see, and I can see people who I see such amazingness in them. And I know they don't feel it about themselves. And that's because of me. Because I have, people can see the amazingness in myself, but I haven't seen it before. Like, it made me feel uncomfortable because, one, I feel like either you're lying or you're ill or something, really. And it's like an imposter syndrome. And going back to this Mormon Stories podcast and this Jesse Hildebrand, who's the niece of this woman who tortured her and now has tortured other children going to jail. And when the guy opened it up to <coughs> people want to support you, like, she almost couldn't cope. She was embarrassed and she was, like, hiding her face because she still has got work to do because she was told she wasn't valuable and she wasn't special. And when people treat you that way, it can be painful. I'm here to say that I have evolved past that. And, um, you know, but sometimes it gets me. Sometimes I think, well, this didn't happen because you're really not special. Like people think you are, well, you know what? No. And I can't say shut up. And ignore you because that's the voice that needs what what we gotta explore that. What's that about? But anyway, so for today, if you can add water, just add water, right? Add protein. Make sure you're getting protein. Get protein bars, whatever's easier. Um, but find healthy, yucca approved, and y'all like right now, before I would have eaten one of these, not even thought about it. Well, one, I will have a bite, but I'm not gonna eat it. But if you ate minus the hazardous chemicals, right? You're just gonna go up and boom. So, anyway, y'all, I'm off. I have, is that all? I had show and tell. Oh, I've been wanting to show you all this. Do so you know about these are color catchers? So, you put it in the washing machine. It's amazing, isn't it? So, I always throw these in, except for my jeans, because I want the dye to go all over all my jeans. But isn't that amazing? Look at all that color that is not. So, these are just, I don't know what brand I have. Whatever was cheapest at Walmart, probably. I don't know. There's probably all kinds of chemicals, but right now, I love this thing. So there you are. I will be back. I have a couple things to post last night. It was, it's, it's been a struggle to get up on it. YouTube. It's okay. I'm just going to work on it. And um, we got lots of stuff to do tomorrow. I'm going to give myself grace to get, you know, I do going to get up early and work on my kitchen because we're going to do, if we come in here and finish up, I, you know, I would like it to have the table clear. Right. And, you know, and I, I'm going to get that laundry folded out up to and you know just stuff so i didn't do it today i did it you know i didn't work on that that voice y'all it is something but you know what if i don't pay attention to that voice and talk to it lovingly and kindly and give it attention then what's it going to do it's going to get louder so but thank you guys i appreciate it and i don't ever really ask for lights or subscribes with this because this is just for me to share with you guys right this isn't about money money or getting new people for me the other things I try to do with that in mind, but um, I just sharing, right? And it helps me so much to process. And again, if one other person feels less lonely or less, or starts to begin to understand themselves or think, oh yeah, I do that. Or, oh, okay. You know, um, you know, as that little girl who felt isolated and alone to think that if she could have thought that she would share this experience with others and make a difference, you know, and we do, we make a difference and, um, we all do whether we know it or not, but let's make a difference for ourselves. All right, guys, I will talk to you soon. <laughs>